Hello guys, welcome to my channel Civilology, the study of civil engineering. Today our topic is related to soil mechanics or geotechnical engineering. And in this video we are going to discuss soil stabilization materials like lime, calcement, cement, bitumen, geotextiles and grouting. We will discuss these materials one by one, what are their properties, what are their effects on soils after mixing these materials with the soil. How can these materials improve the stability of the soil? We will discuss this in this video. Before we start our today's topic, if you are new to my channel, you are requested to please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates. In one of my previous video related to soil mechanics, we discussed about soil stabilization techniques, the link of which is given in the description. Also watch that video. Let's start our today's topic. First of all, the first material is lime. Quick lime often referred to simply as lime. Quick lime is also called as lime is the chemical compound and it has formula CaO which is calcium oxide. Quick lime is available in two types high calcium and dolomitic. Okay. High calcium is almost completely calcium oxide whereas dolomitic quick lime contains a portion of magnesium oxide. MgO along with calcium oxide. So the common difference or you can say the simple difference is that high calcium only contains calcium oxide whereas dolomitic quick lime contains some portion of magnesium oxide along with calcium oxide. And lime will stabilize clay soils. Now this is very important to note that lime is for clay soils to provide long term strength gains that will continue after initial applications. Studies have shown that these reactions can continue for a year or more. Lime stabilization provides the calcium component and the proper chemical environment that is necessary to permanently stabilize a soil. Soils with a plasticity index of 10 or more are generally great candidates for lime stabilization. It is also very important to note that plasticity, the material having plasticity of 10 or more are good candidates for lime stabilization. The materials with lower plasticity are not suitable for lime stabilization. Okay, And proper laboratory testing is important to determine soil reactivity and dosage rates necessary for proper stabilization. The second material for soil stabilization is calcement. Lime kiln dust, shortly called as LKD, is a co-product of the lime manufacturing process that contains a combination of calcium oxide, CaO, magnesium oxide and pozzolans. Much like fly ash, the pozzolans come from the fuel used in the combustion process and are finely sized materials carried by exhaust gases and collected by emission controls such as big houses. The presence of pozzolans enables the stabilization of more granular and sandier soils. Now, as we discussed that lime is for clay soils whereas Calcement is used for granular soil or sandier soils. Since calcement LKD also contain calcium like lime, the product can also leverage the pozzolans naturally present in clay soils to generate cementitious bonds. Similar to fly ash, anytime the co-products are used, energy consumption and emissions are reduced. The use of virgin material and disposal to landfill is minimized making calcement LKD an environmentally friendly alternative to traditional reagents. The third material used for soil stabilization is cement. Cement is widely composite material composed mainly of calcium, silica, alumina and iron. 
derived from the limestone, sand and clay. All are processed, fired in a kiln and pulverized to a fine powder. When cement is exposed to water, it chemically hydrates, resulting in a gel that forms an interlocking matrix around soil particles. The mix hardens or cures very rapidly, typically within one of three hours. So the soil cement mixture must be placed, mixed and compacted quickly. This rapid curing results in high initial strength gains that taper off rapidly. Cement is a good option when working with sandy coarse grained soils. But the effectiveness of cement decreases as clay component and plasticity index increases. As I mentioned before that lime and then kel cement then there comes cement. Cement is not suitable for materials having plasticity less than 10 or the materials having clay content. Okay. Cement stabilization merely masks the effect of clay and is not economical option to stabilize fine grained soils. Additionally undesirable shrinkage cracking is often associated with cement stabilized soils allowing water to penetrate and cause further damage. Soils with plasticity index of 10 or less are generally candidates for cement stabilization. Proper laboratory testing is important to determine the right product and dosage rates necessary to properly stabilize the soil for your specific application. The fourth material for soil stabilization is bitumen. Bitumen is a naturally occurring organic binder. Okay, and that, that is typically obtained from petroleum distillation or refining of crude oil. It is a sticky, viscous liquid that commonly holds asphalt together. When bitumen is added to a soil, it fills the voids in the soil to mechanically stabilize the soil rather than reacting with individually soil particles. Contrary to the previous three materials we discussed that is lime, kel cement and cement, that they, those materials chemically react with soil particles whereas bitumen acts as a binder only. Okay, as we discussed over here that it fills the voids in the soil to mechanically stabilize the soil. Okay, soil type is an important factor when considering bitumen for stabilization. Finally, grain soils need higher dosage rates of bitumen to stabilize soil compared to sandy coarse grain soils. Bitumen is often one of the costliest construction material, so dosage rates are a key factor for cost effectiveness when considering bitumen. Weather is another factor to consider as bitumen and its viscosity is very susceptible to differences in temperature. Viscosity will decrease with temperature resulting in a poor mixing and unwanted and uneven mix and seemingly random stabilization in colder temperatures. The fifth material used for soil stabilization is geotextile. Geotextiles are fabrics that resist chemicals and biodegradation like bitumen. Geotextiles mechanically interact with soil to provide increased strength and bearing capacity. Opening size, interlocking, grape strength and puncture resistance is important factor associated with geotextiles. The increased cost of geotextiles adds to the overall cost of the project. The sixth and the last soil stabilization material is grout. Grout is a flowable mixture of water, cement and sand that can be pumped through a job site. Slurry grout is injected at a predetermined intervals to infiltrate the soil matrix. The mix cures over time adding strength and bearing capacity to the soil. Pressure grout is only an option in granular soil as the material must be able to flow through the mass of the soil. The fine particle size associated with clay soils results in a minimal to no penetration rendering grouting ineffective. So it means that the clay particles are not best uh, not to be considered for grouting.
so this is the procedure of grouting as shown over here that first you will have to set the machine for drilling a hole in the unstabilized soil then drilling it uh, drilling will be take place and drilling uh, usually take place by revolution or you can say by torsion by to producing twisting effect into the soil and then execution of jet grouting column rotating and withdrawal as we go upward spontaneously or you can say simultaneously the grout is uh, pumped into the ground and uh, and the uh, drilling take place side by side and similarly repairing for the next column so these are the few materials which are used as a stabilization of uh, soil in my previous video we discussed different techniques if you haven't watched those with the, that video please watch that video as well so that you can get better understanding of soil soil stabilization of material so that's all for today in the end you are again requested if you are new to my channel please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates that's all for today